Good morning. I welcome everyone here on behalf of our spiritual community uh, at Unity of Ocala. We'll begin uh, with an opening prayer this morning. Dear Father, Mother God, we are grateful for your presence and your power as we come together today to meditate, to pray, to be inspired and uplifted by Reverend Laurie's message, and to lift each other up. We affirm the power of two or more gathered in your name. May each person here this morning receive a blessing. Give us the power to live the five basic principles and to be guided by the indwelling Christ as we live our lives here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our way shower. Amen. And I release and let go is our first video of the day. There was a time in my life Thought I had to do it all for myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I didn't know the love of God was at hand But now say if you you are discouraged struggling just to make it through another day gotta let it go gotta let it go you gotta let it all go and this is
Okay, let us speak together our foundational principle. There is only one power, one presence, active in the universe and in my life, God the good omnipotent. And when we live this principle, we are a thriving spiritual community here to inspire one another to realize God's love. Centered in the spirit of God, we see peace, love, and abundance in an awakening world. This is just an aside before I read the Daily Word. I was informed several years ago that Memorial Day honors those who died in service to our country. Veterans Day is for those veterans that are still living. The Daily Word for Sunday, May 28, 2023, is comfort. <clears throat> Loving memories comfort me. There may be days or maybe even weeks on the calendar when I find myself mysteriously feeling melancholy or blue, only to realize the anniversary of someone or something I have loved and lost is approaching. Even when I don't realize it outright, a part of me remembers and responds. I can honor these feelings as a way to honor the people and places that have taught me and helped me evolve. Welcoming my feelings brings deep and abiding comfort. I carry those people and places I love with me in the things that I do keeping their spirit alive. Gradually, I find smiles within the sadness. Revisiting treasured memories reveals the love within the loss. The presence of God is found within the gift of each moment, and I find comfort through my grateful heart. And from Psalm 119, verse 76, let your steadfast love become my comfort according to your promise to your servant. And another music video, I Am Sacred by Beautiful Chorus. I can be me. opportunity to become still, to go within, to let go. If this is your first unity experience, I invite you to just get comfortable. Let go of everything, anything you might have brought into this sacred space. This is your, <laughs> bye little ones, <laughs> this is your time. 
to go deep within, to let go of anything that's bothering you, anything on your heart, on your mind, in your way, blocking you. This is your time, your time with God, your time to step away from the things of the world. You are safe here, you are loved here, you are free to simply explore that inner canvas. So I invite you to get very comfortable in your chair. Take off anything from your lap that might distract you. Let's take in some nice, deep, cleansing breaths. Just clear out all of the old, stagnant energy. Open the way for that gush of new vitality. Close your eyes, if you like, and just let go. I invite you to do a full body scan as we go deep within. We want to explore this inner sanctuary, this place where our spirit dances with God. Become familiar with this inner landscape. Feel the beating of your heart, the life force the blood that naturally flows in every time you breathe. God, in and through you, vibrating, pumping love through every vessel, every cell, renewing, restoring, balancing, healing, releasing. And notice how comfortable your body feels when you relax. It's a natural state of being one that we don't honor in our experience on earth as much as we should. So just breathe and feel the stillness. Feel the weight of your body, your precious temple, your precious miracle of life. Bless this beautiful body, this temple, your head, your beautiful eyes, your ears, your neck, your throat, the muscles, the bones, the tissue, the ability to move, to function, to think, to work, to play, to celebrate, to cry, to feel. Such a glorious experience, this life we've been gifted such grace so breathe breathe deeply and go deep within as you continue to relax further and further just be observant of the energy that runs through you at all times the more we pay attention to that flow, the more powerful it becomes, the more palpable, the easier it is to manage through when we work simultaneously with this loving energy, this life force that flows through the sap and the trees as easily as it does through our veins, through our skin tissue, the juice of God. <coughs> Just allow that to flow. It may feel like a bright light flowing easily through your bones and muscles. It may feel like a warm vibration. God speaks to you constantly in a language you can understand, whether it's through <laughs> pictures, ideas, words, music, art, laughter, joy, nature. All these tools are available to God to love you deeper, to remind you fuller how precious, how sacred you are, how sacred this life. Enjoy that. The deeper you go within your own well-being, the easier it is to release any shadows in there, any blocks that you have put there unintentionally, unknowingly, or knowingly, anything that might be hindering the view of your beloved 
anything that might be blocking the feeling of pure love. Let go of all that. You are precious. So precious. You can't even begin to comprehend how amazingly precious you are to God. How amazingly precious you are. You, an individual thumbprint of God, unlike anyone else on the planet, necessary. God's love is gushing through you. Just let it be. Let that light flow easily, clearing the way, strengthening. It's easy to let go of that which doesn't serve you any longer. It's very easy to bless what has come before and to release. Allow your cells to feel gratitude. It's a powerful, powerful tool that connects us directly to our source. Gratitude. Your life is fantastic, blessed, rich, joyful, peaceful. Whatever you choose, so shall it be. Open largely. You cannot bring a container too large for God. You cannot outgive God. God is blessing you right now. Let it be. Let your life be richly blessed. Let go of the blocks. Let go of any negative thinking. It is not so. It is not your truth. Your truth is that you are beloved. Beyond understanding. Beloved. You, precious one. You, precious one. Unlike anyone else. Beautiful, sparkling. Enjoy that. Take that in. Absorb it into every cell. Your glory. As if you're looking at a perfect brand new baby. Those sparkling eyes that you love so much. God sees more in you than even that. In the quiet of this space of grace, simply feel the power of the presence of God. Simply feel and know the power of the love of God. Simply enjoy it. It is yours, free. In the quiet, feel the power of this love. And observe, simply observe.
space of grace. Allow yourself to be free. Simply going within and listening has allowed you to release layers. Allow yourself to feel a clearing, an opening, a renewal, a new page, a new chapter. Exciting, and you are not alone. As we prepare to bring our attention back to this space and time, let us collectively set an intention to be more fully aware, to be more fully alive, to honor God's creation by showing up as the light which was created as us, to honor God fully showing up in the power of who we are. What a gift. Thank you, God. Thank you for this opportunity to be reminded of the power of your presence. The opportunity to know you more, to love you more, to serve you more. We are so grateful, so grateful. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Mm. Amen. Well, for those of you who have been coming to Unity for a while, studying Unity principles, you know our spiritual journey offers many tools for all the aspects of life, healing tools, opportunities for growth, ways to manage challenges, all of those wonderful things we learn in unity about becoming good spiritual students, and paying attention to and being mindful of the gift of life. But sometimes things just take us by surprise, <laughs> regardless of our intentions or our journey. Delightful, scary surprises. As you know, I've been gone for a couple of weeks. I've been very, very, very sick, which is, um, which I don't do very well, apparently. <laughs> I'm not, I've never been a sickly person. When things go around, I normally don't get them. And if I do, it's very mild. I've just kind of been very fortunate that way. Yes, I like to think that Unity has a lot to do with it. I do the work of Myrtle Fillmore constantly. But this was different. This was interesting. I got COVID, which kind of surprised me because I have, of course, all my boosters and I'm in hospitals and hospice houses all the time. I have to stay fully boosted on everything up to date. I'm very healthy, so kind of surprised me. And I was sick. Very, very, very sick and alone. Um, I've never been that sick. I don't even really like to call it sick because it was such a powerful experience for me. It, it was so powerful and so to the point that I had to get out of my own way. You know what I mean? Because when, it, when I first started feeling it, you're like, oh, man, I think I'm kind of getting something. <laughs> what is this? So you go into all your affirmations. You know, you get all the health food out. You do your stuff. This was different. Pretty soon, <laughs> within about 24 hours, I was having difficult navigating. <laughs> like, I was having an out-of-body experience. I was having an out-of-mind experience. And it got worse and worse and worse. Every part of my body hurt. <laughs> my eyeballs. <laughs> Have you ever had painful eyeballs? Where, where you don't want to, oh, don't blink, blink, ah! My hair hurt. I was freezing one minute and then sweating the next, throwing up. My bedroom's upstairs, and I just gave my front 
bedroom bed to my mother in her new space. And it was all I could do at the end of a day, even though it wasn't dark yet, just d I was just done with the day, to, to figure how to get upstairs and then just crash land <laughs> into bed and not move. Because every time I moved, I hurt. There were points of hallucination, which were very strange to me, as I don't like to be out of my crazy mind. <laughs> I like to have a little bit of consciousness. It was terrifying at first, because I didn't think I was going to make it. I've never had that feeling before. I have never been scared to death. I've been in accidents that terrified my mother more than me, probably, at the time. I've been sick. This was different. This was, um, this was the verge. And had I not been so sick, I would have been terrified. It was so amazing, though, because I could, <laughs> this happened to me during back surgery, I could do nothing. I was completely powerless. Now, those of you who know me know that that's not, Debbie, where are you? That's not a comfortable place for those of us that like control. That's why God puts us there, because we can't seem to shake the control. I thought I was doing quite well at it, but apparently I'm not. It forced me to, I don't want to say surrender, because I had nothing to do with it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I could do nothing but observe. And sometimes I was unconscious, and I'd kind of come back to, and I'd think, I wonder what today is. I'm so glad I've got Janice at church. <laughs> I know she's taking care of things uh, and allowing me the freedom to go through whatever I'm supposed to be going through. Um, I didn't have the wherewithal, the strength, the energy to even think about practicing my healing techniques or my meditation techniques. There was nothing, I was completely on empty. Completely on empty. And it was weird. But there was something going on that I knew intuitively whether I got to the other side of the veil or not, because I really didn't know. There were two nights there that I may have slipped away a little bit. I'm not sure. There was a shift in consciousness and perception and bodily weight twice, two nights in a row. Um, and I could do nothing but observe. Couldn't call anyone. Wasn't about to go to a hospital. I, all I could do was lay there and try not to blink. <laughs> it was so strange. And my cat would be looking at me like, well, are you coming or going? What's up? I'm hungry, you know? And I'd be like, kid, go, go away. It was so strange. It was beyond, it was beyond scary. Um, even though I knew God was there, I couldn't feel it. I couldn't really feel much of anything physically. I don't know if it was just because I was drained or what. And this went on for a good solid week. I'd have a uh, kind of maybe a little bit of strength and drink a little tea. Everything tasted so horrible. I was sure everything in my house was rancid. <laughs> I guess that's a symptom of that illness. Um, and then I remember laying in bed. It was about four in the morning, and I'm just kind of moving over to my meditation chair <laughs> like I do every morning, <laughs> trying not to move much. And I remember just kind of having this, this, um, it wasn't really a flash. It was more a, a warming of a, a, an awareness that, that was unfamiliar to me, but yet familiar. D do you know that feeling? There, there was something in me that I recognized, but not in a visceral way, not in a, oh, that happened to me 10 years ago or in a lifetime ago. Th this was different. This was a, oh, I, I, I know you. And I was just interested, still unable to clearly think, 
my brain was very foggy, still unable to articulate a plan for my wellness. <laughs> um, all I could do is sit there and be. And something started happening in me that was so extraordinary, um, but yet so normal. I, I wondered how I'd missed it all these decades. I and, and it's hard to define because it's not definable. It's not an actual state of being that I can put a meaning behind. There was this in me, a sense of clarity that was beyond me. I had no control of it. I couldn't hold on to it or let it go. It had a way of its own. And I was just in awe. It was, it was a state of bliss that I had never felt on my own without some sort of influence. Even though we like to think I can stay in this state because of my consciousness and we're working out these principles, quantum physics, we know all of this. This was beyond me. But it was me. It's so hard to describe. And there was in me this childlike essence like celebrating this discovery, rediscovery. Is anyone understanding a little bit about what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a familiarity that is eternal and so extraordinarily powerful. I could not not be it. There was absolutely no way I was not it. It was the very essence of me. A and I was so... Out, I, I was just having this out of body. What is, this is the most extraordinary thing I've ever experienced. It was an expansion of perhaps consciousness. Or I don't know. It's hard to put words to it. It was this complete, total state of contentment that I've never experienced before. I've been content. I've been very happy. I'm a happy person, very optimistic. This was different. This was such a powerful, natural state of being. There was no way I could absolutely be anything else. And I didn't even have the wherewithal because I was so struck with how extraordinary it was, what a gift it was, and I didn't want to go any deeper for fear I'd lose it. You know, you, you kind of go to that human stuff. But it was all okay. Every time I would try to enter into with my own stuff, it would go away. I mean, my ego would go. I had to start writing down because I didn't want to lose this feeling. I didn't want to lose this enormity of what was happening. It was as if God was right here. right, And, it's, and it was so extraordinarily beautiful and easy and natural, and playful, and fun, and right. It was just like the most extraordinary freedom I've ever felt. And I kept writing, and I kept writing. And the next day, it intensified. I don't even know if I ate anything or not. I just wanted to be in this space. And there was this overwhelming, completely encompassed me, sense of gratitude. And my ego tried to slip into, why haven't you done this before? How can you stay into this? How can but something bigger than me wouldn't let me. It was more, <laughs> I felt, if I would have felt better, like dancing, like simply sailing across the yard. It was euphoric. And no, it wasn't cough syrup or anything like that. I can't take any of that stuff. It was something so profound and so beautiful. And it's still there. It, w once you feel something, we've all had instances of this. 
once you feel something like that, it doesn't go away from your consciousness. I've always been a teacher and a student, so I'm constantly finding way, ooh, how can I put this to a class? What can I do with exercises? How can I get? It wasn't about that. <laughs> it was simply about breathe, enjoy. This is it. 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 It doesn't matter if I die. It doesn't matter if I'm in a, on a gurney in the hallway in the emergency room, my mother. It doesn't matter. I had a glimpse of it when my daughter was in that bad wreck and I had scooped her up and that light surrounded us. It doesn't matter. I don't have any profound words of wisdom <laughs> for you about what it meant or what to do with it or why. I'm just grateful. I am so incredibly grateful that I got so sick. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that. That really sounds strange. You understand. I'm so grateful I got so sick that I had to absolutely release everything of who I was and could not be anything but present because it's the greatest gift that's ever happened to me. <laughs> My soul is singing. I'm not taking it lightly. I don't think there's any great, big, huge, deep lessons. Um, what kept coming through to me is how extraordinary we are, every single one of us. The light in me is not the same light in you, although it originates from the same source. It cannot be. It has to show up different, or one of us would be unnecessary. That's how important you are. That's how vital this is. This energy that we have flowing through us is dynamic. It's eternal. It's amazing. It's grace. I'm not going to waste a second of it. I was reminded, you know, uh, one of my favorite all-time quotes uh, in just her life is Martha Graham. You all know Martha Graham. She was kind of the inventor, the mother of modern dance. This is in puritanical America, and she brings this crazy dancing to the stage, live audiences, and they're like, oh, <gasps> my God. And she just shined her light so brightly, so powerfully that she gave everybody else on the planet permission, regardless of what their light was. <coughs> I remember watching an interview with Betty Davis. Where she talked about Martha Graham, and the journalist asked her, what do you think about Martha Graham? She said, oh, I love her. <laughs> you can imagine her saying this. She's all fire, lightning, and that tiny little body holds the strength of 10 men. And I think people who are so in touch with their body particularly dancers and artists, have a way of understanding the inner canvas, those inner sensuality, or someone that's lost the use of one of their senses, has a heightened sense and understanding of their sensuality, which is God. Your sensuality is God coming into full bloom, and when we give that permission to bloom, oh my goodness, God shows up. And she wrote a quote. I'm going to take a drink of water. She wrote a quote that has stayed with me for 30 years. And I try to share it with churches and groups at least once a year. But it's been longer than that here. I'm quite sure. Because this just touches us all to our core, and it reminds us of how vitally important we are. We don't have to have it figured out. As a matter of fact, we cannot. Your human mind will limit its potential and potency. We cannot figure it out. It's not our business to figure it out. And she puts it so succinctly, and I, and I want you to take this into your cells. Just take it in with no expectation. Just take this in to your consciousness. And just observe the week. I want to talk more about this on Wednesday. We're going to do... Um, uh, at our gathering on Wednesday, we gather at 12.30, 12.30 to 2, to have some beautiful discussion, some meditation. We're going to talk about spiritual gifts because we all possess these extraordinary gifts. And 
We're going to have a play day on Wednesday. Take this in. <clears throat> and know this is for you from God. There is a vitality, a life force, a quickening that is translated through you into action. And there is only one of you in all time. This expression is unique, and if you block it, it will not exist through any other medium and will be lost. The world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is or how it compares with another's expression. It is your business to keep it yours clearly and directly, to keep the channel open. You do not even have to believe in yourself or your work. You have to keep open and aware directly to the urges that motivate you. Keep the channel open. No artist is pleased. There is no satisfaction whatsoever at any time. There is only a queer dissatisfaction, a blessed unrest that keeps us marching and makes us more alive. Keep the channel open. Namaste.
will the ushers come forward, please? Let's bless our tithes and offerings. The divine love flowing in and through me. Bless us and multiply all that I am all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, I am grateful. Bless our prayer box. The statement on the prayer box says, Where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am among them. These prayers uh, are, are very special to us. The prayer chaplains here pray over these for 30 days, and then they are forwarded on to Silent Unity where they're prayed over night and day for 20, um, for 30 days. So if you have a need, if you have a blessing, please put it in our prayer box. And I think it is time to bring in the children. Hi, Gabby. <laughs> Good morning. You look so beautiful. <laughs> Together. Love we love you. you. We appreciate you. We see you loved, guided, and protected. And we empower you to do great things. <laughs> Today, today's prayer chaplain uh, is Shirley. Shirley is in the back. She was one of the ushers for us today. Uh, we have to wear a lot of hats here at Unity. <laughs> um, and uh, we've done our blessing of the children. Do we have newcomers? We need to uh, bless our newcomers. If you would like to stand or hold up your hand, we want to acknowledge you. We're so glad to have you with us. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. We love you. We bless you. And we behold the Christ in you. We love you. We bless you. And we hold the Christ in you. Yay. And um, I saw Shirley was giving out visitor packets earlier, but if any of you have not received one, she will be happy to get one for you. It has a little information about us. Okay. Uh, the book 
Club is meeting today at 1115, and I believe Martha is our facilitator today. Martha, will you tell everyone what the book is we're discussing? And you're welcome to join the group, even if you have not read the book, because you're going to, to gain something from our discussion. We, we have a good time with the book club. Wednesday class will continue this week at uh, 1230, 1230 until 2. Our conversation and coffee will return next Sunday at 1115. We have book club today, so uh, we won't be doing that. Uh, the drum circle is taking a break for the summer. Stay tuned. It will probably be resuming September or some, sometime in that area. And are there an other announcements? Any other announcements? We're good. Okay. So let us uh, stand while we're closing and say the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is.